Good day, brethren. You are welcome to RCCG New Covenant Parish's Open Heavens Daily Devotional. The Open Heavens Daily Devotional is written by our Father in the Lord, the General of of the Dream Christian Church of God, Pastor E. Adeboe. And I pray that as you've joined me today, God will bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Today, 21st April 2024, we'll be looking at the topic, Your Evening. Our memory verse is taken from Psalms 104 verse 23, which says, Man goeth forth unto his work and to his labor until the evening. Our text is taken from 2 Samuel 21, from verses 15 to 17, which says, Moreover, the Philistines had yet, had yet war again with Israel, and David went down, and the servants with him, and fought against the Philistines, and David waxed faint. And each burned up, which was of the sons of the giant, the weight of whose spear weighed 300 shekels of brass in weight, he being girded with a new sword, thought to have slain David, but Abishai the son of Zeruiah succored him, and smote the Philistine, and killed him. Then the men of David swore unto him, saying, Thou shalt go no more out with us to battle, that thou quench not the light of Israel. A passage says, If you are above 50, you are already in the second half of your day. You need to apply wisdom more than ever before. By evening, you are supposed to be relying more on wisdom, not on strength, as the flood might have subsided. You may you may refer to yesterday's teaching to understand what I mean by the flood. Job 12 verse 12 says that wisdom is supposed to be with the ancient. Years are supposed to teach wisdom. Job 32 verse 7 says that days should speak a multitude of years should teach wisdom. This is why it is said that a fool at 40 is a fool forever. You are supposed to have become wise by the time you are 40. Because as people grow older, they naturally become weaker. So, our Father and Lord is telling us that by the time you are 50, you are already in the second half of, of, you know, of your day, in the second half of your life. And so at that point, you should be relying more on wisdom than on strength. You are no longer as strong as you were when you were much younger, when you were a youth. Now you should be relying on strength because as the days come, as you get older and older and older, you have lesser strength. And you should have more wisdom. So is that this around this time that you should have been building up your wisdom? You should have gained the experience, known how to apply the knowledge and the experience you've gained, so that you don't have to excite yourself um, too much. Nobody will believe, except those who are close to me, that I used to be a boxer. Nobody will believe that there was a time I could carry a bag of cement in one hand and another in the second, and say that I was balancing the equation. Now, even with two hands, I will think twice before I pick up a bag of cement. That's according to our father in the Lord. He was giving the personal example. He used to be a boxer. He used to carry two bags of cement uh, easily when he was younger. But now, even though even now that he's old, he, he will think twice before trying to pick up one bag of cement. Because as you grow older, we all know strength wins. And that's the time for us to begin to rely on wisdom. In 2 Samuel 21, 15 to 17, the Bible says that David waxed faint. This was the same person who killed a lion and a bear. It was the same person that delivered 200 false skins when he was asked to get a hundred. In 1 Samuel 18, verse 25 to 27, David, the giant killer, the one who single-handedly cut off Goliath's head, waxed faint and could have been killed in battle if somebody had not come to his aid. What lesson can we learn from that? When David was at his peak, he had prepared for the time he would grow faint. In 1 Samuel 22 verse 1 to 2, when he was in the cave of Adulam, he gathered some vagabonds and turned them into mighty men. It was one of his boys that was there to help him when his evening came. So, we see David, you know, based on our text, David went out to fight, you know, with his men against the Philistines as usual. But in this battle, he grew faint. The strength was no longer there. It wasn't like when he was younger. David was the one who killed Goliath, a giant. He was the one who delivered 200 foreskins of Philistines to uh, to Saul, who was his father-in-law. He was supposed to deliver 100, deliver 200. He was a mighty man of valor in his younger days. The strength was there. The skill was there. The energy was there. But now, he had gotten older and he went out to war and he could have been killed. Because the strength was no longer there. But David was wise in that when he was younger, he didn't go it alone. He had some vagabonds that, you know, he brought together, trained them, and they became mighty men of valor. He was one of those guys that came to his rescue 
when he was about to be killed. So if David had relied on his strength, I can do it alone. I can do it by myself. It was not impacting the life of people around him. It was not raising up people to help people, you know, to become mighty men of valor. When the day of trouble came, there would have been no one to help him out or to rescue him. In 2 Samuel 23 verse 1 to 39, we read of the people he had prepared who are now called David's mighty men. These men risked their lives by taking on an entire army just to get him water to drink. If you are in your flood age, you should prepare disciples when things are going very smoothly. Are you preparing for those days when the flood will be gone? What arrangements are you making during your daytime? Because the night is coming. I am speaking in Proverbs, but the word is enough for the wise. So if you are in your noonday, you are still in your adult years when you have that energy, you have that skill to go around, you can make advancements in career, in your spiritual life, in God's service, in every area you have, you know, like we discussed previously, there's usually a flaw. There's a time when you have, you can exert a lot of influence. You can achieve a lot. During that period, make sure you are building other people up. Make sure that you are not going it alone. You know, some people, when that flood comes, when blessings come, they keep to themselves. They want to hold everything to themselves. They want to take care of only themselves. Some will even take, of, take care of their wives and their children and relatives and friends around them. This is a time when you should sow and invest into others. Bring them up too because a time will come when that strength will no longer be there. That influence may wane. You know, nothing lasts forever. It is those people that you have raised up around you that will come to your support, that will prop you up when your strength is gone. So let's be careful of how we spend our adult years, that period when, you know, we are moving up, we are advancing, we can achieve a lot. Let, don't let us do it alone. Let's apply wisdom. Let's build up people around us so that in future, they will be the ones to also support us. Our key point says start building younger people now so that when your strength is no longer as before, they can be there to help you. So let's look at ourselves. Let's look at our community. Let's look at our families. Who are the people that I can support? I can help up. There are some people that you need to send to school. Um, you may think you don't have a lot, but it may be a lot in some places. There are people you need to send to school. There are people you need to, to, to help gain a trade. There are people you need to help in their spiritual lives. There are people you need to disciple. Let us help these people because when we grow older and the strength is no longer there, they are the ones that will take over and support us and our work. And I pray God will help us as we think about this in Jesus' name. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for your word that has come to us today. We ask, Lord, that you give us wisdom. Wisdom that during our adult years, when that flood comes, the flood of blessing, influence, and impact comes, Lord, that we'll invest in other people, we'll build other people up, and as we grow that, help us to, help us to be wise and to live wisely in Jesus' name. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name we've prayed. Amen. Thank you very much. God bless you.